Hello, I'm Michael with Writer Sanctuary, and today we want to talk about how to write content textbook your clients will love. Now, before we get started, I need to add a bit of a disclaimer here. These are methods which work best for me. You may have a different experience other than my own. All I can really do is show you how I write content for clients, which inspires them to give me excellent ratings. I can give you an idea of the structure that I use, but it will be your own words that make or break the strategy. After all, the following is meaningless if you can't word the topic correctly for the client. So number one, be mindful of paragraph length. One of the things you need to keep in mind when creating content, whether it's for a textbook or not, is avoiding the wall of text. This is when somebody looks at a page and sees nothing but word after word after word. Readers are less likely to skim through the content if they are faced with a never-ending stream of words. This is aside from the fact that the wall of text does not look good on mobile devices. And considering how many people use mobile devices to get on the internet nowadays, this is imperative. And because the readers don't like it, your clients aren't going to like it either. Keep paragraphs to about two or three sentences long. I know there's experts out there like Neil Patel who likes to put one sentence per paragraph. Personally, that kind of layout drives me nuts. When you do something like that, it takes me so long to scroll through all your content just to find the piece of information that I'm looking for. I don't really like reading Neil Patel's stuff most of the time. But you might like that kind of a method. I just don't think it jives well with the clients on TextBroker. Number two is don't use excessive jargon. Not everybody will have a thesaurus on hand to translate your work. In fact, the average internet user reads at an 8th grade reading level. Of course, this is also according to US standards. But still, you want to make the content as easy to absorb as possible. And this means you need a good readability score. For myself, I use Yoast SEO and WordPress to measure my flesh reading ease. This is a system that judges your content according to a variety of different factors to find out if it's easy for the average reader to absorb. This includes things like using words that have too many syllables or sentences that are too long. But if you don't have Yoast SEO or WordPress, there's a lot of tools online that you can use. For example, you can use the readability test tools at onlineutility.org or the readability test at webfx.com. I'll link to both of these tools in the description below. I used to use readability.io, but they locked a lot of the features that I use behind a registration and a paywall, which is why I use my WordPress with Yoast SEO. It's free and I can add anything I want to it to give me the most robust word processor for my clients. But if you want to learn more about using WordPress to write content for clients, I'll put the video in the link right here. Now in the beginning, I was accused of being too clinical in my writing. It was far too advanced and had no really emotional attachment to it. And it took a while for me to break my habit, but it was for the better. I experienced far fewer revision requests and my ratings have gone up since then. So you don't have to completely dumb down a topic, just make sure it's easy to read. Number three is break up sections with subheadings. You want to break up prominent sections of your content using headers and subheadings. In TextBroker, you can do this by adding the HTML command. It makes it easier for readers to skim through an article to find exact information that they're looking for. And because it's tailored to help visitors find certain pieces of content, clients love it. Well, most of them anyway. But it's helpful if you understand the hierarchy of how headings and subheadings work. For instance, the H2 tag supports the title of the article. The H3 tag supports the topic of the H2. And so on and so forth. Now you don't want to go hog wild with the headings and subheadings. The last thing you want in any article is just a mess of headers. But if you're not sure how to use the headings in articles, I would suggest taking to Google and doing a bit of research on it. A good source to use is w3schools.com. It's a great place to learn a few HTML tricks that you can use in the text broker editor, and it's free. I'll add a link to that site in the description below as well. I'll probably do a video later on for headings and subheadings and how to use them. It's, I feel it's fairly relevant for freelance writers or bloggers. Number four is always cite your sources. Now, when you're citing facts, you want to link to the page that you're pulling the data from. In a world where fake news runs rampant, you want to be able to prove your claim. Citing sources helps build authority. And the more authoritative the client looks, the happier they are. Not to mention that external links like this help in SEO. That's something else the client loves. I've seen for myself the impact of what citing sources can do on a website. My posts often get more visibility, they rank higher in search results, and they also have a higher on-page time. Number five is add personality to your content. Personality kind of goes along with the excessive jargon. Most people want to read content that they can connect with. And adding some kind of personality helps with that. In some cases, I've even added a first-person narrative to express a personal experience. Now, some clients don't want the first-person content, so you need to be mindful of their needs. That brings me to number six, don't add filler to reach word totals. Now, some of you might be tempted to add filler or fluff content to reach a certain amount of words. Not only will this get tagged by the editors, but it'll also demonstrate to the client that you're not really serious about writing content. Filler 
or fluff is when you add content to a piece that doesn't really support the topic and it's just there just for the sake of being there. Now instead of adding filler, do some research and add some more facts to the article. See if there's something else that you can expand on, a different idea, maybe a different point of view on it. Personally, I average a little over 100 words per article on top of what the client's looking for. This is because I want the points to be concise and as clear as possible. Just keep in mind that every sentence you write in that article has to support the topic. And don't write redundant points throughout the article. You might be tempted to write a line of text that's similar to something you've already created, but worded differently so it appears different. But if it's laying out the same facts and the same material, it's redundant. A lot of clients and editors do not like it. Number seven, don't be afraid of bullet points. Now bullet points are some of the most effective form of content on the internet. And because of this, clients love them in the orders that you submit. Of course you want the bullet points to make sense though. But if you can create a list inside of an article, put it in a bullet point instead. It catches the eye of the reader and makes certain pieces of content easier to absorb. And again, because of that, clients will accept it. And number eight, keep in mind the client requirements. Now not all the methods that I mentioned here are going to work for every client. Some will have far more strict guidelines for you to follow. For instance, you might have one client who wants more clinical writing in a tech manual or some kind of science paper. Just always bear in mind what the client is looking for and build your strategy around it. Not everyone's going to want HTML in their project. In fact, I know a lot of direct order clients who do and one team that doesn't. So I have to go back and forth and make sure that I don't add the H tags inside the team while I can add them to the other client. Kind of a pain to go back and forth like that, but it works. But if they don't specifically say no HTML or no links, more often than not, they're going to appreciate the effort. So there you have it. That's eight steps that I take to write content for clients on TextBroker. Now I can't guarantee that every client you come across is going to accept an order because you follow these steps. Remember, it's going to be up to you to put the words together. But it's a method that's served me well for the past several years. So what do you think is the most difficult part of creating content for clients? Leave it in the comments down below. But if you found the video informative, hit the like button. If you want to learn more about text broker, freelance writing, Wattpad, or WordPress, hit the subscribe button. I try to make videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I think that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you tomorrow.